Hey there, this is Jeremy, and in this video we're going to be working through problem set number one um, and talking through some of the reasoning for this problem set. So uh, let's get going. So problem set number one, this is just an introduction. So question number one asks us to define chemistry in one sentence, and chemistry is the study of matter. And so you could ask, well, what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and that takes up space. That's usually how we define it. Um, the definition of chemistry continues to talk about uh, study of matter, composition, structure, properties, changes, as well as energy associated with those changes. Um, so that's nice, but saying a study of matter is sufficient. So. All right, problem two here. For each picture, state the class of matter, whether it's a pure element, compound, or a mixture, explain your reasoning. So before we do that, why don't we jump over here and um, write out a little classification of matter. So matter can be split into two um, main categories. The first would be a pure substance. And the second would be a mixture. We can then further break down a pure substance. Well, let's talk about those first. First, a pure substance is something where everything in the stuff that you have has the same chemical makeup. So they're all the same atoms, they're all the same molecules. Um, a mixture then would be uh, where you're, you've got more than one type of uh, chemical makeup in your stuff. So, and we'll talk about some examples. But first we can split up pure substance even further and say that we have elements and we have compounds. So an element, um, like helium, is an element. Okay, but O2 is also an element. So an element is any time you only have one type of atom. You can have as much of it as you want, but only one type of atom. A compound, then, is if you had multiple types of atoms. So like water is a compound. It's still a pure substance, because if you have a cup of pure water, everything in there is just H2O. Same chemical makeup, but because there are multiple elements, um, it becomes a compound. And let me add one more note on here. We can further um, differentiate these by saying this is an atom, because there only is one atom. These are molecules, because there's more than one more than one uh, atom. So again, elements have one type of atom. Okay. Compounds have more than one type of atom. Atoms have just one atom. Molecule has multiple atoms, whether they're the same type or not. All right, and then in mixtures, we've got um, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous mixtures are when you um, can't easily separate the different um, compounds that make up the mixture. So, like milk is a good example because milk is milk is a mixture. It's not a pure substance. There's no milk uh, molecule or chemical or compound. I mean, um, it's a mixture of different stuff. But I couldn't easily go in there and separate that those things. So um, that's a homogeneous mixture versus a heterogeneous mixture is one where those things would be easy to separate. So the classic example is salad dressing. Like if you have Italian salad dressing, it's got some water in there, but also has some oil in there, and those things are easy to separate. It probably also has some spices and seasonings floating around. So that would be a hetero heterogeneous mixture. All right, so now we've got this classification of matter, so we can jump back over here and um, talk about these questions. So whether the substance is a pure element, a compound, or a mixture. So A. Um, a would be a compound. Um, because everything in here, every, all of these are the same molecules. So we know it's a pure substance. And then each thing in here has more than one type of atom. So that would make it a compound. This would just be an element because everything is the same, which makes it pure substance, and there's only one type there. And then here, this would be a mixture. Because um, I've got different chemical makeups, which puts me in the mixture category. Now, whether it's homogeneous or heterogeneous, I can't tell, because we're looking at a microscopic level in these pictures. But you'd have to look at a macroscopic level to see what type of mixture it is. 
All right, number three, for each of the following, state the class of matter. If it's a mixture state, um, which are homogeneous mixtures and which are heterogeneous mixtures, stay away from them. Um, so let's start with salt water. This should be over here. Um, so salt water would be a homogeneous mixture. Because uh, you can't easily separate, you can't see the salt floating around uh, after it's been dissolved. Purified sugar would be a compound because sugar is just made up of a single molecule if it's pure. Um, high pulp orange juice, we would say that's a heterogeneous mixture. Because you can see the different things mixed in there. Apple juice would be a homogeneous mixture. There's no compound called apple juice, right? Um, it must be a combination of multiple. Diamond is a pure diamond. is actually just an element. It's just made out of carbon. Gravel um, would be a heterogeneous mixture. You can see the different stuff in there. And then compressed air in a scuba tank is actually a homogeneous mixture. A lot of people wonder about this one because they don't necessarily know what the different compounds in a scuba tank air are, but um, if it's just compressed air, it's got oxygen, it's got nitrogen, it probably has some argon in it, um, but you can't tell the difference, so that would be homogeneous. Solid butter, that's a mixture and it's heterogeneous. Oh, excuse me, that's homogeneous. Baking soda, they give you the compound, the chemical formula right there, which suggests that this is um, a compound. Pure copper, plumbing pipes, pure copper, suggests this is an element, if it was actually pure copper. And that's it. All right, number four. Describe the state of matter, solid, liquid, or gas, and state your reasoning in one sentence. Um, so, A looks to me like that would be a liquid. B would be a gas, and C would be a solid. Um, now, you could debate that, oh, that looks like a gas, right? Um, but relative to each other is really what this question is asking. Um, you should recognize that solids are typically most compact. Now, you could argue that's not necessarily even the case with, uh, with water, but um, in this case, you can see all of these connections that are being made, which is suggests that's a solid. Versus here, they're close together, but they're not make they're not optimizing how many connections they can make. So. Anyway, so again, this question is relative to each other. You likely won't be given like this picture and asked, is that a solid, liquid, or a gas? Because you could argue that it could be a, a liquid or a gas. So um, there we have it. All right, describe the following changes. If there are physical or chemical changes, and state your reasoning. Also describe the physical states of each substance. So first, let's talk about what a physical change versus a chemical change is. So a physical change um, means that over the course of the change, your chemical composition um, has remained the same. Versus a chemical change means that at a molecular level, your chemistry is changing. So let's, if we just look at these, we could say, all right, so here we have reds with reds and blues with blues, and then we switch to red and blue mixed. So that would be a chemical change. And then in addition to that, um, it wants the state of matter. So it's pretty obvious that it goes to goes to a solid, but we could say that this is a gas to a solid. We could probably also argue it's a liquid to a solid, kind of like I was talking before. And then this second one here, um, blues with blues stay with blues, and reds with reds stay with reds. So this would be a physical change because at a molecular level, nothing's changed. But then with the phase, so again, if that's a solid or a gas, or a liquid or a gas, we could say it's a liquid or a gas. Um, we can tell that um, blue hasn't changed and red has changed. 
So red is either gone from like a gas to a liquid or a gas to a solid. So I'm going to say gas to gas plus liquid, or we could say liquid to um, liquid plus solid, if you're following. And that's, that's good enough um, to think about it that way for now. All right, number six. Which of the following processes are physical changes and which are chemical changes? Describe how you know. All right, so again, physical change means the actual chemical makeup is not changing. Chemical change means it is. So fish in the fridge smell more fishy with time. That is chemical. Um, the fish is decomposing and releasing different chemicals that have that smell. All right, muffins bake in your oven. That's also chemical. Okay, when... Uh, stuff bakes in your oven it releases carbon dioxide gas which is what creates the air pockets that makes your muffins fluffy all right salt crystals forming a hot day in salt lake we would say that's physical because all that's happening is water is evaporating from the lake and there's so much salt that once some of the water evaporates some of the salt has to solidify into crystals uh, but you can imagine if we just added that water back it would dissolve again um, so that's just a physical change. It's still just salt and water. They've just separated. All right, a spot on your car where the paint was scratched starts looking brown to red. That's chemical. That's rusting. The oxygen is reacting with the metal, um, oxidizing the metal, which is what rust is. So that's chemical. Soda goes flat as dissolved CO2 comes out with time. That is physical. So when we carbonate soda, um, <coughs> All you're, uh, all you're doing is adding CO2 gas in dissol and dissolving it into the soda, which makes it carbonated and bubbly. So then when uh, you open the soda, depressurize it, and the CO2 comes out, it's still carbon dioxide, and it's still the exact same soda. It's just that, again, they've separated, so it's a physical change. And last part, soldering a pipe in your house. Um, we would say that this is physical. If you know what soldering is, when you melt one metal onto another metal to hold two pieces of metal together or to seal a uh, crack in a piece of metal or something. Um, all you're doing really is melting the metal, which is not changing the chemical makeup in the metal. Um, oh, I guess you could say freezes. It solidifies again, which is not a, not a chemical change. So that's all physical. And we're down to number seven. Indicate whether each of the following are physical or chemical properties of sodium. So physical properties are things that you can measure without um, undergoing a chemical change. Chemical properties um, have to do with whether or not something reacts and therefore um, require a chemical change to measure. So sodium, its density is greater than that of kerosene but less than water. So density is something that you can measure without reacting, right? And so that's physical has a lower melting point than most metals. Melting does not change the chemical makeup, so that's a physical property. It's a good conductor of heat and electricity, also physical because if I had a copper wire, for example, and run electricity through it, it's still a copper wire. Let's see, it's soft and can be easily cut with a knife. Well, this is also physical. Cutting something does not change its chemical makeup if I go and cut my hair or cut my grass. Um, I haven't changed the, the chemistry of my hair or of the grass. Oh, speaking of, um, here we go. Freshly cut sodium rapidly tarnishes when exposed to air. It tarnishes when exposed to air suggests this is chemical. It's reacting with the air. And the last one here is sodium reacts with water. Well, that's the giveaway. You've got sodium and water, and they react and release H2. That means you're generating new molecules, which means you're changing old ones. So that can be chemical. Now that looks like that's it for problem set number one as an introduction.